recently laid off from his job as vice president of a New York City ad agency, Brian Schwartz has taken on what you could call a new grassroots campaign. Did you ever mow lawns as a kid? <laughs> Never, no. Nah. Schwartz is picking up yard work, mowing, trimming, weeding, and anything in between from senior citizens in northern New Jersey for free. I can only imagine the stress families are going through now, and especially now, the last few months, like we all have been through a tough stretch. So I just, I love grandparents, and I just want them to know they're not alone. There's no fancy landscaping equipment. The New Jersey native loads all his gear in the family Jeep as he spruces up the community he grew up in. He connects with his clients through a website he set up, IWantToMowYourLawn.com. Lois Reichert has lived in her house for 70 years and called Schwartz after finding him online. How important was it for you to be able to find someone who could do this? Oh my God, it's a lifesaver. Look at it. I took such great pride in my yard and gardening and now with, you know, pacemaker and a defibrillator and 18 surgeries, I just can't do it anymore. And that's heartbreaking. The digital advertising manager started the site just days after getting laid off in mid-June with bills mounting, a mortgage waiting, and yet another life change ahead. I just wanted to do good. Got out there, just didn't want to sit around. Um, you know, my newborn, first newborn just came mid-July and, you know, I knew I was going to have a little bit of downtime. So now just getting back into the swing of things. Downtime and a newborn. I don't think I've ever heard that before. I don't know what sleep means right now. <laughs> Schwartz has a handful of clients so far. The difficulty for many elderly homeowners lies in tracking down someone to trust. It means the world to me to have somebody that can help me because it's very hard to get anybody to help you. Especially if you're a senior, you get a lot of people that take advantage of you or do something but don't finish it. Alfred Beyer reached out to Schwartz after struggling with carpal tunnel and back pain. When was the last time you were able to mow your lawn? Well, quite a while ago. The last time I cut the, the top of the bushes because the neighbors complained, they said, this guy is too lazy to cut the bush. So I forced myself to cut the top in front of the bushes. As word has gotten out, a backlog is beginning to build with more requests for help coming in. But so too have calls offering help as volunteers. Similar boat as me recently laid off as a result of the pandemic. There's millions of us out there. So I, I feel like I'm not the only one that is kind of in the same boat that has the equipment to help out. In the meantime, Schwartz says he's still actively looking for a full-time job and wants to see where the site can go, but hopes to continue volunteering. My name is Brian Schwartz. I'm based in New Jersey. I am the founder of I Want to Mow Your Lawn, Inc. Uh, a website that provides uh, free lawn care maintenance to senior citizens, military veterans, and disabled people. And started at the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic of summer of 2020. Hi, Brian. How are you? Good to meet you again. And thanks again for reaching out. I'm okay. Oh my goodness. You know what? I mean, I this is a, one of the fun things for me where um, if I see someone in a newspaper or if I see someone, I hear someone on the radio or TV, I'm like, I'm going to ask because like, you know, we all know the rule of thumb. If you don't ask, you don't know. And so I'm like, oh, he, I, he's kind of cool. I want to talk to him. So hi, cool guy. <laughs> Try to be cool. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> um, so, all right. So I have to know about you. Well, before we talk about your company, I want to know about you. Because like, that's the biggest thing where behind every company, there is a phenomenal person. So tell me who you are. You're in New Jersey. What's your story? Yeah, so uh, born and raised in New Jersey, you know, I had a chance to go to college away in Arizona and then work in Florida. And, you know, I've been in the digital advertising space for the last 15, 20 years, ever since graduating from college. And um, at the peak of the pandemic, I was laid off uh, from an advertising agency uh, as a product of COVID-19 and a couple others were laid off. And Seeing everything going on in the news, um, you know, I just decided, you know, I went outside to clear my mind and just do my lawn at, at my house. And um, oh, you know, wait, 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 wait a second here, sir. Wait a second here. Did you see how fast you just went over your life and went right to the? What are you doing? No, we want to. We want to know who Brian is. Okay. Um. 
New Jersey, you were in Arizona, you were in Florida, digital marketing, um, marketing. Let's just talk about the, the marketing. Is this what, I mean, is this what you want to do throughout? I mean, like I go, what was it about, I mean, what happened in your lifetime that all of a sudden you ended up being in marketing? And by the way, in market, in digital marketing is, I feel it, it's newer than marketing overall. So what was it? Well, give me the, there's, there's such a gap between the grew up in New Jersey and digital marketing. So can you fill in a couple of the blanks, please? <laughs> sure. So, um, you know, going back to um, even college, you know, I actually uh, start, I studied graphic design. And so I started out as a designer uh, doing just like web work and um, print design and web design. And I realized, you know, it, was, it wasn't a career that, I, you know, I wasn't always artistic in a way, strangely enough, but um, I found, you know, I, I found it to be, you know, I learned a lot along the way in terms of like just details and communication um, and just uh, listening to others, feedback. And um, somehow just over time, you know, as I was doing like website marketing, website design, um, it kind of just like naturally happened just to figure out how to market it as well. Like I, I know that once you put up a website, not everyone's just going to go and find it. It's like not if you build it, they will come. You have to go out and find it. And so um, strangely enough, the first, um, my first uh, job out of college, I was, I first started with this telecom company designing um, uh, prepaid phone cards for them. And I actually um, got transitioned into becoming like an outdoor outside sales representative. So I was not only designing my designing the prepaid phone cards for like uh, Arizona. This was before like, I mean, obviously um, this was 2003. So like mobile phones were still just like kind of in infancy and not like uh, we didn't have social media or anything. And so people were still using phone cards. And yeah. I was actually on the road going door to, you know, um, different carnivorous areas. And I'm um, on the road, like just working on a consignment basis, selling phone cards into inventory um, at these grocery chains and whatnot. And um, that's kind of where I, you know, learned to kind of just like get out there and, you know, network with people and build up relationships and, it felt cool to kind of like see my own work like along like uh, shelves and whatnot and kind of that's where it kind of like kind of like pivoted out of doing design and more on like the sales and relationship management and kind of like the marketing front. And so the next role I took on, I was working for a um, uh, extended family business. They were a, a manufacturer of uh, oral care products. And so I was response I was brought on as like a marketing coordinator so I did everything from like the website design and managing brokerage firms and relationships and taking in orders and figuring out and even like talking to like logistical carriers and trying to find the best rates to get things out and, and ship to pro, like to each store um, and that's where I kind of first started dabbling and trying to help trying to sell um, products direct to consumer um, where the rest of my, most of my career has been involved in, uh, direct to consumer marketing. And from there, you know, always had something involved like in, front, in forms of e-commerce. And, um, so from there, you know, I was working for like a software company, uh, managing both their business to consumer and business to business affiliate programs. So I went from kind of like being like, you know, I, I built up some websites over time and like flipped them for a profit once I kind of like learned um, the tricks and everything. And mm -hmm. eventually I became like on the other side, like managing all these affiliate marketers and learning from them different marketing media types, like online, offline, and, um, you know, built up a pretty big book of business over time, um, working for different like ad agencies over the last five, six years. Um, got laid off uh, one time. Uh, because of um, a company acquiring this other company and um, a lot of overlap. And so I just delayed this role. Um, you know, I was managing a small team of, uh, I first started as like a, a senior affiliate manager and then I got promoted to oversee like a small team and build up a team. Um, so I take a very democratic approach, you know, I have a laissez-faire, I, 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 um, I don't micromanage and I like to empower others. 
Um, and so, you know, I, le I left a good groundwork with the latest advertising agency I work with. And then I got recruited by this, most recently, this advertising agency. to oversee a small uh, Wait, lead generation you, program in-house where I Brian, explain all kinds of different that? tactics I've learned along the way. Brian, can you repeat that? Because you, you froze. So the latest, so my latest role. Yeah, so my latest role, you know, I um, got brought on to oversee a uh, lead generation in-house program and kind of came full circle in terms of like going back to like marketing directly and uh, deployed all kinds of different tactics and built up marketing plans and even, you know, uh, prepared profit and loss statements and uh, testing roadmaps and project management cues. It was pretty much like starting up my own business, but I was kind of like a, an employee in a, in a sense. And um, and that's like on the professional side of things, you know, I, um, on the personal side, you know, I've always been, um, you know, involved with like health and fitness and just um, like in my spare time, like I was doing like, um, affiliate marketing for like an audio fitness mobile app mm -hmm. where I became like a top affiliate marketer back in like 2017. This was before they even, um, came out with like an affiliate program. So I was kind of like a beta tester, yeah. um, promoting my own coupon and doing like influencer marketing and having others promote the app as well. So I've always found like, you know, combined like health and fitness, um, you know, following sports that I like, got a personal side. Um, and, you know, I have a, a newborn this past summer, you know, I have a family now and thank you. So he's a pandemic baby. And um, just um, thinking out loud. Yeah. I mean, just, um, this 2020 was a crazy year between having a newborn and going through a pandemic, my father battling brain cancer um, and so it's uh, been a little bit of a stressful year uh, uh, from getting laid off to where I'm at now and um, just decided uh, over the past summer to do something good and create my own good news. All right. So, all right. So you, so that's what I'm, you filled in the gap. Holy moly, you filled in. So um, you, um, so one, having a baby during the pandemic, let's just, let's start with the, the, the amazing, the absolute amazing. Um, how was it having, I mean, like, how was it having a baby during the pandemic? That's all I, that's, I don't even know where to go with that, but. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was a stressful time, especially for the wife, uh, the mother of the baby and um, not being able to go in, like at the peak of the pandemic here in Jersey, like we, I wasn't even able to go inside, like for certain appointments with doctors, like for sonograms and, cause we didn't know what was going on with this thing. And um even like the baby shower hat we did like a drive-by like everyone was outside so we had to like cancel the plans to do anything inside or whatever and i mean we made the best of it and uh it made us all stronger you know i mean uh, thankfully i was there to you know they, they passed the law at some point where we're, like they were at least allowed the father in the hospital but it felt like we were in the walking dead at the hospital this was in july um there's nobody around. We, I mean, we had the baby inside our, our uh, hospital room that whole time, but just mm -hmm. thankfully he was safe. And, you know, even to add some more uh, stress to that, like he was found with a rare cataract, three in every 10,000 babies. And so okay. we had to go to surgery um, in New York City, uh, successful surgery, but requires patching every day daily. Yeah. And so it's not easy, you know, not getting much sleep and, um, making the best of it. Thankfully, it's treatable. Mm -hmm. It's going to require just patching every day for the next six, seven years. All right. So um, when you say patching, what does that mean? Eye patch. So his right eye, we're, um, we're training his right eye. So we had to actually put an eye patch over his good left eye two hours a day. Okay. So, that, it, so it's building strength. Building strength in the, the eye that, you know, doesn't have um, perfect vision. Okay. Um, did you marry well? I'm sorry? Did you marry well? Marry well? <laughs> Meaning that I, I ask everyone in regards to the, because you're in a pandemic, did you marry well? We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, um, we, we um, came out stronger than ever. Yeah, we're doing I, all right. I love it. I love it. Um, 
your dad is your dad okay as of today or well, yesterday he was put on hospice care and so it's been a uh, you know last he uh, was diagnosed a couple of years ago uh, with glioblastoma, uh, which is the most aggressive form of brain cancer. And doctor at that time, this was Thanksgiving of 2018, he was only given 15 months to live. So he's already surpassed doctor projections. You know, he's a fighter. He has this, he had to wear this like FDA approved device on his head 18 hours a day. And I think that helped keep it, keep it at bay coupled with his sheer willpower um, you know, he's 67, so he's not old, um, but, you know, he's had a fulfilling life, you know, he's accomplished a lot. Um, I learned a lot from him in terms of, um, how to think critically, um, and just be a good person. And, uh, he's my hero. I, I always say, um, warm kisses, warm kisses. Like my dad died at 81 years old of cancer. And, um, and I, I mean, like literally blessed. I mean, like with every business thing that I am, every business thing that I am, every, the innovation, the adventures, the curiosity comes from my dad. And like I go and I always say, just like find as much as you possibly can from that person, because honest to goodness, that will be the legacy that you leave behind. So keep that legacy alive for me. Cause that little, like that little person that you have at home right now will be learning from you because you learn from your dad. Yeah, I just think that he was like able to meet him as a first time grandpa. That was uh, that was like the um, the highlight of our 2020. I think that you had a you just named off a few highlights right there, right, friend. I mean, you you named off a lot of highlights from 2020, and we we haven't even started this conversation yet. But I mean, I mean, oh my god, I'm I'm loving where we are right now. Um, let's go a little bit to we're gonna sway a little bit to business for a bit. You literally have run the gamut um, in regards of marketing. Um, you started your career, I mean, I'm 51 years old. And so I remember when I was a producer in radio and it was the green screen. It was like, the, I mean, the fax machine and the phone were my best friends. I was hours on the phone with the operator um, just to get from one person to another person to another person. And you pretty much have started your career like that too. And you were at the crust of every single thing that, um, that marketing people are just like, oh yeah, like I just Google it. I'm like, oh, that's great that you Google it. We learned how to hustle it. Um, where did that come from? Like you were so curious and you navigated through so many different parts of marketing. Um, where did that come from? I mean, was that from your dad? Was that from other family members? Was that from a mentor? Because you kept on elevating and taking one thing and growing it and owning it. And then next and next and next and getting acquired by other people. What made you be that person that were, was so hungry for it? Just following my heart, really. Um, but I really do think it came from my dad. I mean, he's a heart. He was a hardware design engineer, so he built circuit boards. So he was always, you know, like growing up. I remember he worked a second job, like always in his basement, to give us a better life and designing things. Like I, I never understood like you know putting like wires and things together for some pretty big companies like he worked for IBM and um, for a company that was acquired by them like he was a hardware engineer I, I wish I, I was half as smart as he was um, and so like wiring things and designing things like thinking things through like I definitely learned from him I mean my mother also I mean she was she was more on the social side of things so being able, being able to combine both together like I feel like both my parents I learned from a lot When the pandemic started, um, we're, we're in it months, it's been months. Um, you have this career, full on, this is your career. I mean, and what, I'm sorry, what was your degree? I have a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Technology with a concentration in Graphic Information Tech. That's from uh, Arizona awesome. State. Awesome. So now you, you, like you've done your studies, you have, you've had this career and then the pandemic starts and then you lose your job. What was like, I mean, what I mean, you, you, I feel like you've been this sort of, I mean, like, I, cause I want to say hustler because you've hustled your way through marketing very, very well. You've navigated this through well, very well. Um, and then the pandemic starts to lose your job. What happens then? So now like walk, now walk us through the, the reason why I'm talking to you, like why I reached out to you. Yeah, so uh, it was like June 8th, 2020, I got a call. I thought I was getting a call about paternity leave policy. 
especially like during the pandemic, like how that was going to work. And I was immediately told that um, they were just deciding to part ways and uh, along, along with two others. And so that was a sh uh, straight result of the pandemic. And I was, my life was upended from that point. I was a little scared to tell my wife who was eight months pregnant at the time, the news, I didn't want to stress her out too much. Um, so I had to kind of, um, figure out how to deliver that. And, you know, I actually suffered an anxiety attack, uh, soon after and went to the hospital, thought I was having a heart attack, but, um, came out stronger, you know, a few days later, I went out just to kind of like clear my mind a little bit. Um, you know, we had a mortgage on our house that we're on forbearance at the moment still, uh, six months later, but at the time, you know, I was, uh, I uh, just want to clear my mind and just not looking at the news too much because it just created more stress with everything going on and not knowing what's going on. Uh, you know, being quarantined after, I think that was like three months in at that point. And I'm just seeing the news, like, you know, like seniors being vulnerable. And at that time, you know, I was not only thinking about my dad, I was thinking about providing for my family, my grandfather who passed away just before like the pandemic it was like in uh, october november well the fall of 2019 and i was just it was still fresh on my mind like i was also thinking like thankfully like um we were able to have a proper burial for him and i was just thinking about the stress that families have been through throughout the pandemic um so i just want to help out um create my own good news uh they don't want to wait around and mope around be depressed you know, I've, I've also had the experience of hiring others and I, I know what it's like to see a gap in a resume and lots of questions can come up. And so I want to do something just to fill in my time and just help out, uh, just kind of re also reflect on, you know, myself and, until I figure out my next role, not knowing where it would go. And so, yeah, I put out like a local, you know, at the, I was using, um, it was called let go a mobile app i put up like an ad just to help out and i'm realizing the people that want to help the senior citizens that were most vulnerable during this pandemic um probably not the most technically savvy and so i decided to try something different you know i got comments on there from people my age saying that's a great thing but yeah i wasn't getting inquiries so i decided just to send out like a local press release to some newspapers and they picked it up and you know, I got established with some local neighbors and then somehow kind of just um, spy, like transpired, like more news outlets picked it up uh, just organically, just between, you know, the timing of it all and the story, like, you know, working for digital advertising agency and getting laid off and now becoming just a lawn care guy and just using my like advertising skills to get out there, you know, I got picked up by over 300 media outlets across TV, prints, uh, radio, and um, yeah, it's pretty great online. I mean, just, it's crazy. And then, so I uh, just did a lot of soul searching, you know, um, got some more people reaching out, wanting to volunteer. And so I figured it only made sense just to raise some funds to create a nonprofit organization. So raised funds over GoFundMe and made it an official 501c3 nonprofit waiting on, so it's now certified as a nonprofit in the state of New Jersey and uh, just waiting on IRS to make it an actual official tax exempt. So that should be coming through this month. And uh, so wait, 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 oh my God, this is, this is so good. This is so good. All right, so um, the marketing man, hello. This is, this is one of those moments where I wrote a children's book um, two years ago, and uh, I was approached by a, uh, an author saying, "Like you got a lot of attention for your book." I'm like, "Yep." Yeah. And she's like, "How's that possible? I've been writing books for a very long time, and I've never got attention." I'm like, "Well, I'm a marketing person, so I know how to market." So writing a book, I didn't know how to do, but I knew how to write. I knew how to market, and she knew how, she knows how to write books, but she doesn't know how to market. You're a marketing man, and you got attention. So. Um, you could have just said, I'm going to mow, like, I'm like, I'm going to be a 15 year old kid. I'm going to just mow lawn for my neighbors. Why did you choose well, the elderly? I, it's very clear. I mean, that it makes sense, but then you went for vets as well. And so why did you go for vets as well? So I first started out just with senior citizens. And then as I'm, you know, helping out, 
you know, we're helping out like these 70, 80 year olds. And they, like some of the conversations we were having with clients was they, you know, served in war, Korean war. So it only made sense just to add that to the language. Okay. Uh, just kind of giving back, you know, they've sacrificed to, you know, provide us, you know, some form of freedom. Um, but um, so I figured I'd just add that to the list of people to help out. And you have volunteers. I mean, so how many volunteers do you have and how big, I mean, so where in New Jersey, I mean, is it like, how, how far do you, do you reach now? So started in North Jersey, uh, but now I've expanded to six states with 20 volunteers. I um, even, you know, I've been providing anyone that, you know, we have a, a section for volunteers to sign up, you know, I'm trying to make it into like an actual platform for others. Mm -hmm. um, being that, you know, I've been able to get all this coverage and, you know, providing like, you know, marketing assets to them, you know, setting up profile URLs and even phone number extensions for um, clients to reach out to these volunteers. And I'm in parallel doing some like promotions to the radius that they cover, even got um, some coverage for a woman, a mother of two in Houston that was also laid off and she got some coverage under the brand. Um, so I'm helping others like kind of get the word out as well. Beautiful. Now, could you have ever imagined this coming? I mean, like, could you ever, ever imagine? Nobody could have planned for 2020. So I don't know. Yeah, I never thought I'd be here now talking about this specifically. Um, you know, I only bought my, I, I never, you know, thinking back to as, as a child, you know, I went around and was uh, shoveling driveways for neighbors. So it's in my blood to do that. Walking I feel around like every kid did that though. I mean, like when I was younger, I mean, I did that. I mean, yeah. I painted houses, I shoveled. I like I, the stacking of the wood, which by far one of the things I hate the most, but I remember stacking wood for the neighbors. So I think that when we were younger, that's what we did all the time. If, mm -hmm. if, if you weren't going to get allowance, I mean, I'm first generation born in America. There was no allowance. Like my parents were like totally anti, but they, working hard for money, they were like, go out there and there's someone that needs you to do something for them. And you get a dollar here, you get you know, $5 there. So it was always part of what we did. And yet you hear young people don't want to do it as much. And so how did, I mean, like, that's one of those things where are your volunteers younger? Are they our age? I mean, like what, I mean, who are your volunteers? Yeah, for the most part, they've been the ones that have reached out to me have kind of ones that kind of have come across news and the, it's resonated with them as well. Like, I would like to say 50% of them have also been like laid off. So they're trying to also just kind of do something good amongst all this darkness that's going on in the world. And um, for the most part, like, I mean, I even have some guys that, you know, are wor working full time and they just want to help out on the weekends. So mostly just awesome. elder folks. Some guy, I have some guys that are even in their 60s. What is the reaction from the people that you are mowing their lawns? And also just to talk about the fact that you're shoveling as well. So what's the reaction from everyone that you're helping? It's a feeling you can't explain. They, um, you know, they express their gratitude. They want to offer tips and we don't accept it. Practicing social distancing and um, it's just nice. You know, you go and do the work and you go on to the next thing. And um, they're just super appreciative. I know like some, a lot of senior citizens are on fixed incomes and mm -hmm. people are thinking about their finances. So it only makes sense just not just to also provide, not just to provide them, provide them uh, physical, but mental relief as well. Absolutely. Let's just say in a perfect world, um, the pandemic, the economy, everything goes back to, goes, goes to our new normal, not back to normal, but goes to our new normal. Do you go back into corporate world? Do you like what? What happens to the company? What do you? What is your plans now? So I have to be realistic in terms of generating an income. You know, we got a mortgage to provide for and a, a son to provide for. But um, you know, listening and absorbing options now and trying to figure out. You know, in a perfect world, I mean, it'd be uh, cool to be able to continue this. I think it'd be a good story uh, to, you know, continue to raise funds and have others on board and, you know, um, making it kind of a full-time thing. But I also have to be realistic being a charity, you know, I have to, if, I, if there's a full-time job that comes up that makes sense um, financially, I'll have to take it and make this more of like a weekend hobby at least and keep it going. 
with hopes that, you know, I have other volunteers that can kind of like take the ropes. Cause I'm only a one man. There's only so much that I can do. I have to also spend time with family and balance that as well. But um, definitely, don't, I mean, if it, even it's just like one lawn per, per week or something, like I hope it makes a small difference. What if someone is listening to you right now and they are looking to engage um, in like, if you, if, if, again, let's just keep adding to the, in a perfect world, we're in our new normal. Um, what would you want some, if you wanted to stay with this, what would you need to keep this going um, and grow it where you're in four states? What are, what are the states that you're in? So we're in, uh, well, Jersey, New York, which is Long Island. We got uh, Illinois, Texas, Massachusetts, Florida. So you're more than four. Yeah. Massachusetts, yeah, you're here too. Um, so um, what would you need? I mean, so it, it, like, if you can envision it growing and being your business that it's, that's, it's here long-term, what would you need to make sure that this is sustainable? First and foremost, obviously, I mean, as with any business, you need the finances, right? So donations, which would then translate into hiring on some new talent to, you know, the right talent to uh, work with me and build out a strategy and an infrastructure because there's just so many legs in terms of, um, you know, getting like, you know, states involved or federal involved and even other like company sponsors, right? So, I mean, not just donations, but sponsors and any other form, you know, even volunteers. Like, I mean, they, they're the backbone more than anything. So um, right now, yeah, I mean, I've raised enough to kind of uh, buy some insurance and even like focus on some like technology in terms of like putting a focus on like the volunteer search, which is like the next step. But um, having people on full time to kind of like not only manage, you know, client relationships, but also you know, volunteer relationships. So there's a lot of legs. I, I love that. So um, if you were, if some, all right, so, I mean, there are a lot of individuals that were, have been furloughed, a lot of individuals that have been laid off, um, a lot of individuals that are at home, they're working, but they're not enjoying their job. They're not enjoying their job, they want more. What advice would you give to someone that is, I'm having, I'm stuck, I'm just stuck, or I just don't know what's, going to happen next for me because I no longer have a job. What advice would you give to a person that is thinking about starting something like you did? Well, first and foremost, you know, um, I would say, uh, no pun intended, the grass ain't always greener. Um, <laughs> so um, first and foremost, you have to learn to appreciate what you have now and appreciate the moments. Um, it's not an easy time, like for anyone. I mean, there's, it's not a job seekers market. So if you're looking to jump ship and find something new, just hang in there and, you know, just keep learning and focus on yourself and improving what you, with what you have. But uh, with anyone that's, you know, in a position, just get out there and, you know, um, network and just, um, you'll, you'll find something eventually. Um, just don't give up. In regards to um, where are you wanting to, where do you want, well, like, I shouldn't say that. You are literally doing grass and now you're starting to convert into snow. Um, what could, what else could you add? I mean, how else could you scale this company? Uh, because I mean, obviously there's the elderly and the vets, they, there's a lot of needs out there. Um, it, it honestly makes sense. Like it clearly makes sense in regards of mowing lawns and taking care of the shoveling. I mean, is there any, any more you could add to that? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of legs in terms of referral partnerships, which is something that I'm familiar with as well. Um, uh, Cause we're on the premise and we have these clients that you're establishing trust with and they're asking you about things that I don't really specialize in, whether it's like tree removal or even like Netflix installation, which is what somebody asked us for. So um, I feel like there's a lot of different ways to go about like cross promoting with other partners and even, you know, providing a platform to even professional landscaping companies to kind of at least give back and not just uh, focus on profits. Um, but yeah. You, um, you, you're a marketing person. Um, again, let's just say you go back into the marketing world. How does a, like a nonprofit or how does an organization like yours now, your present, or, uh, your present company, how does one market? Because that's one of the things where you're doing it and you're doing it 
in a flawless way. I mean, you went down the list of all the different uh, avenues that you've gone through in your career. Someone is starting something new. Now that's the next level. That's the next level of uh, of advice. What would you tell someone where now I started something? How do I let people know about it? Because you are just saying, oh yeah, if I was here, 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 and people don't understand all the work that you do, like scratching your nose. I mean, for you, it is like scratching your nose. So getting that visibility, getting that visibility for your company um, is by far, I mean, the most important thing about starting anything, whether it's a product, whether it's a service, whether it's a business. So what would be a few steps in regards of you start something from scratch, but you have to tell people for them to engage. What do we do? How do we do it? And how do we not get discouraged about if, if you put out a press release and no one contacts you, how do you not get discouraged? All good questions. You know, I've, um, I'm not taking any of the, the coverage that I've received for granted. You know, I've also, you know, attempted at businesses in the past and have failed miserably, you know, I've tried to like create other websites. So it's not like my first time, like, it's not like, um, you know, I've done something without thinking things through, like I'm very, um, selective when it comes to even thinking about doing my own going about my own thing because it, it, it's a lot of work to kind of get established right like with so much competition and everything going on but um yeah i mean with in terms of not getting like picked up with a press release it's not the be all end all um of getting the word out um if you're not getting news coverage but you know i mean there's so many different platforms out there now like in terms of like social media and just like creating a content strategy and, you know, getting, you know, doing some form of like guest posting or whatever, but there's just so many different tactics to go after that. Like you shouldn't just rely on getting free media coverage. Um, because I mean, yeah, I'll get like, I'm looking at my Google analytics now and like the, at the time, the days of which I was getting, you know, like live TV or whatever, like see this big spike in traffic, but it's a matter of how you, um, I don't know who's like, I know I could see who's visiting at the time, but it's really just like the follow throughs and retention and using that, like any of your clients more so using them as like your marketing tools. Like I'm now focused more on building up like reviews for my different properties so that it becomes more of like um, a credible trustworthy thing and not just a PR stunt. Yeah. I, I love that you just said that because I mean, like a lot of people are, not utilizing the people that are closer to them um, and getting media um, and then getting people just paying attention to you. That's one thing, but not understanding how I can actually use you, not just for one time, but for all times is something that people are not understanding. Um, for me, when I saw you and I'm, and I'm so happy, I mean, like I was in Florida for the holidays with my mom. I walked into a room, I saw your face. I saw, I mean, I literally heard a little bit of the interview. I didn't even know what it was, but I heard the name of the company and I'm a former TV and radio producer. I can find you. Um, I can find anyone, which is great. So I, I mean, and I found you and I, and I started reading and there was like so many different articles, but I mean, those are other people's words. And for me, I want to actually interact with you, not just on this one little part of you, but so much of you because everyone, and at least I tell everyone, you're not just your company. You're so much more to you before your company. And I think that's why you're successful. And that's why people want to engage with you because you were taught to communicate and engage by your family. It started from your family. And I go and really like understand like your relationship with your, your, we'll call it your, your granddad. I mean, all that started from when you were young and you built up and just like going from sales and getting those cards at all the different stores and feeling pride, feeling pride in that. But also when you were mowing the lawn and shoveling when you were younger, you felt the pride. And that all came up to this point of, not being afraid to walk up to an elderly or to events you're like, hey, do you need help? Do you need help or do you need services? So this is not a gimmick where this is like guerrilla marketing or this is like a, well, like, like where everyone's like, oh my God, I want it fast, I want it now. You've been building up and I try to tell everyone all the time, it started from the, it started from so long ago and not just this thing that went viral. This person was behind that and that person has had, has built up those skill sets. And that's what I gravitated towards the most was the fact that you have the biggest heart. And I saw, I mean, literally, dude, a snippet of an interview, I saw something that I wanted to do my due diligence. And I'm like, I want more people to know who you are, what you're doing, why you're doing it. And whether it's long-term, short-term, you're out there helping people in the community. And it's like, I mean, 
you were, you just said like, oh yeah, I had a bad couple of months in 2020. I'm like, baby, spend time with your dad, start a business. You've been doing all these things and you're engaging with all of us that you probably would have never met. So I'm thankful for you because you've done so much to get to this point. And I love the fact that you're, so, you're helping, you're helping and supporting people, knowing that moments for your life are just like, like there's, there's dings, there's dings in life right now, but you're kicking ass. So thank you, my friend, thank you so very much. Um, thank you. Emotional on me. No, don't get emotional on me because I know <laughs> there's more story and there's more to ask. It's, I mean, it's not, no pun intended. It's been blood, sweat, tears, and a little bit of poison ivy along the way. Oh God, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm allergic to poison ivy, I'd be pissed. So, <laughs> I'd, I'd be so, I'd be so sad. Goats, <laughs> goats, I did yoga with goats and goats like poison ivy, just so you know. <laughs> I, could, I could definitely partner you with a company in Massachusetts that they do that. Um, if you had a personal, this is my last question because because we're not getting emotional here. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you had a personal and a professional ask of anyone that's listening to you right now, what would be your personal ask and what would be your professional ask? Because you, my friend, are phenomenal. You're a kick-ass and I want everyone to like really just like, really hear you. Thank you. Yeah. Professionally, yeah, just um, always open to mentorship in terms of next step. I'm not an expert by any means, of course, always look, looking to learn. You know, trying to figure out what to do next. You know, I've been in the agency world forever, but I'm not sure if I wanted to do that again or try something new. I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there and just trying to figure out how to position myself and be happy with uh, what I do. Um, whether I should, you know, pursue making this 501c3 um, a full-time thing, if, if I can, like, that'd be cool, but and just also providing assurance to if I join a company that it's not going to be a conflict or anything and they're on board with me just keeping it like a hobby or whatever and how to manage that, mm -hmm. I guess. And um, yeah, personally, just, uh, I guess, just focus on a work-life balance, you know, dating back to uh, before I got laid off, just um, I was a workaholic and so trying to learn you know i'm now i mean now that i've had some downtime the last few five six months i've been able to focus more on family but um once i get back to work just uh learning just to keep work-life balance and um you know as i mentioned like, i like i like to work out so it's always good to uh figure out how to um stay in shape without going to the gym anymore um <laughs> And I guess that's it. Yeah, I mean, I can't really, I don't, I haven't really thought that much else. Just uh, one day at a time. One day at a time. I mean, Brian, I mean, honestly, um, uh, this, the staying in shape part, I mean, hey, I, I jump rope now. I mean, jumping rope is awesome and it's just easy. So you may want to add that to like, it's just super easy to do. Yeah. I mean, it is an absolute pleasure to talk to you. It really, really is an absolute pleasure. I love that you... Um, whether it was the anxiety attack or whether it's just like you going for a walk and figure out like what to do and you came up with something, not just something to do, but you came up with something kick ass, something to do. So thank you so very much. And I'm, I'm so proud of you. I mean, like your family, I go and like, like, like I'm just gonna say for your dad, warm kisses. I always say, um, spend those times and just give warm kisses because the A is by far the best thing when We'll call it when if if anything on the on the negative happens, you'll remember those moments like like nobody's business. So take those take every single moment of it every single day and enjoy it and smile and and I'm very 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 very, very I, mean, I can't keep saying it. like I'm so happy that I got to meet you. I'm so happy that my mom had the TV on blaring. <laughs> those old people love those TVs blaring. <laughs> I walked in, I saw your smile. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And this is not the last conversation. Um, this is going to be many more because I want the conversation to keep going so my people can see you guys and see that you're out there and you're doing things and that this is not just like a one hit and then you just disappear. So definitely. Yeah, I appreciate everything. Oh my God. Thank you very much, Brian. And have a great day. You do the same. Thank you so much.